Lawyers, did you ever win your case so much that the opposing lawyer was fired from his job? So both me and my opponent were baby lawyers when this happened. Let's call my opponent Jay. Jay was a nice kid and I knew him in law school, but he was horribly shy. Talking in front of the class left him almost in tears. I later learned his entire family were lawyers, and they pressured Jay to follow in their footsteps, even if it was clear he'd be a terrible lawyer. Jay was actually pretty good at school, he was smart and even with his social anxiety he was at the top of the class. He did a lot better than me actually, and was hired as a public defender about a week, before I was hired by a law firm. Now I don't know if this was his first time in court, but we ended up facing off not too long after. It was only my second time, so I wouldn't have been surprised. My own client was a shop owner suing Jay's client over shoplifting or property damage, but it was years ago, and I can't remember. Either way it was a pretty clean cut case. My client had footage of everything, but Jay's client refused our plea deal, so I expected him to have the book thrown at him in court. Now I was a bit nervous of messing something up, but I didn't show it, and I had pretty good evidence on my side. I don't blame Jay for being nervous, his client didn't exactly put him in a good position, but that happens sometimes. You just have to do your best and sometimes you're going to lose, and you can't take that to heart. I don't think Jay truly understood that. The trial itself was actually pretty boring from what I remember, at least on my end. I presented my evidence to the judge, and Jay presented a defense. He stammered a little, and stumbled over words, but I don't think he did too badly. His client got some jail time, but that was expected. When the trial was finished I saw Jay rush out of the courtroom. I was concerned so, as soon as I could I left as well to go find him. He was in the entrance of the courtroom, crying his eyes out. I felt bad for Jay, so I offered to take him out to lunch. We went to Olive Garden, and I swear he cried for 30 minutes straight over the unlimited breadsticks. I told him straight that I didn't think being a lawyer was for him, and he took me advice. We talk occasionally still, and last time I checked he was a counselor, and he seems to be doing a lot better now. So this might not be exactly what you were expecting, but the other lawyer I was facing retired directly after our trial, but most likely that was from the heart attack she had on the stand, rather than anything I did. The woman was well known in my area as a skillful lawyer, and is probably older than the Queen or England. She was the most prominent lawyer in the small town I was in at the time, and she could be a nightmare if you happened to be the unlucky soul opposing her like I was. The cast itself was quite interesting, it was about a reporter exposing a corrupt cop, and getting him fired. The cop wasn't happy about all the sudden negative publicity, so he hired me to sue the reporter for slander and trespassing. The former was baseless, because the cop did what he was being accused of, but the latter had a bit more validity to it. Unfortunately for me the reporter hired the best lawyer around, so I was pretty confident that I was screwed. Still I was being paid, and I wasn't about to back out, just because I knew I was going to lose. The cop was angry, and didn't want to drop the lawsuit so I continued. The other lawyer was very successful in absolutely tearing into my client, and ruining all his credibility. She focused on the slander accusation, bringing up every piece of evidence the reporter had against the cop. I don't know if this was pre-planned, but it was a stroke of genius for both her and her client. It made everything public record, and ensured both their names would be in the newspaper the next day. I was honestly impressed, and had just accepted my loss when something started to go wrong. The other lawyer started to stutter and cough. She kept speaking, but wasn't making any sense. People started to take notice at her sudden loss of composer, and I heard a few mummers in the usually silent court. Then suddenly she grabbed her chest and practically collapsed on the podium. The courtroom bursted into chatter and I rushed over to help her. A quick recess was called, while someone called an ambulance. She was taken away, and the trail was postponed. It later came out that she had a heart attack and was retiring as soon as the case was over. I convinced my client to drop the case, so I didn't even technically win that one, but opposing counsel did retire, so I consider it appropriate. I'm never gonna forget this case, mainly because opposing counsel was a huge douche and deserved everything that happened. He was a lawyer who decided to represent himself, something you should never do. My client was also a lawyer, 
but he was smart enough to hire me to defend himself. I'm not going to lie, the case was pretty stupid. It was over my client supposedly stealing a client from the other lawyer. The client was getting a divorce and dropped him for reasons I don't know. Now this happens, and it's actually pretty common. I don't know why the opposing counsel decided to make a big stink now, but some people are too petty for their own good. My client was willing to try and compromise with him before the trial, but he demanded a truly exorbitant settlement and refused to settle for anything less, so we went to trial. The judge was already in a bad mood from some of the previous cases before us and was clearly unamused with us, but specifically opposing counsel. That was fine with me, sometimes you need to deal with upset judges. Luckily for me the judge's anger wasn't directed towards me or my client, but mainly the other lawyer who was putting on a terrible performance. Almost every question he asked I objected to. You would think a lawyer would know better, but evidently not. The judge eventually got fed up and snapped can you ask a valid question next, or something like that. Now the other lawyer was not happy about that. I don't remember exactly what he said, but it was something like well a real judge would just let me ask my damn questions. There was an audible gasp in the room, before everyone fell silent. The look on the opposing counsel's face was priceless. He realized the second he spoke he messed up, but he couldn't take his words back. I'm sure if the judge wasn't already angry he would have just given him a verbal warning and dismissed the case in my favor, but no. The judge had the idiot arrested for contempt of court as well. I learned later from a friend who worked with him that he was fired from his law firm because of the entire thing. I don't know what he does now, but I doubt he's still a lawyer. At the time neither of us were lawyers. I eventually became a lawyer, but I doubt he got that far. To preface this let me say quite a few weird people without anywhere else to go end up in law school for some reason. You'd be surprised at how many stoners walk through the doors, and unsupervised at the amount of people that walk out the same doors only a day later. The person, let's call him Adam, wasn't a stoner, but he wasn't lawyer material either. He still acted like a bratty teacher who talked back to teachers all the time. Mostly he was harmless, but I was one of the many few who just wanted to punch the guy. He was that annoying. Somehow he managed not to flunk out by halfway through the semester, which is when the school got a real judge in for a Fawkes court of sorts. We were given real evidence from real cases that were already settled, and it was a fascinating assignment. My job was to defend a woman accused of murdering her abusive husband. In real life she was given a manslaughter charge and 5 years in prison, but I won't give more detail here. I prepared like crazy for this case, excited to finally get a real taste into the world of law. Imagine my disappointment when I found Adam was the person I would be facing off against. No matter, I was still going to present my case with all the seriousness it deserved. Adam, however, had no intention of doing the same. He acted like a teenager in a fancy suit and it showed. He put his feet on the desk, called the judge back quote mister, and was generally a disrespectful prick. Perhaps he wasn't paying attention when we were told the judge was a real judge, but the judge quickly set him straight. I'll have you know Adam, I'm not a professor of your school, but an actual judge. I remember him saying, perhaps a bit peeved but not disrespectful. You want to know what Adam did? Adam flipped the judge off. B. Flipped. A. Judge. Off. In front of an entire classroom of law students. Our professor practically dragged Adam out of the room which was a bit entertaining to watch. My back quote case was dismissed, and though I was bummed, I cheered up significantly when I learned Adam got expelled. He 100% deserved it. I honestly still feel bad for the lawyer to this day. She was an acquaintance of mine, and was quite nice and polite any time I talked to her, but was a bit emotional which occasionally got in the way. She was usually pretty good at staying professional in court, but sometimes she slipped up. The case we were arguing was a simple drug case. She was a public defender and her client was not exactly a smart man. He came to court wearing a ratty wife beater, old jeans, and a baseball hat that his lawyer just barely convinced him to take off. One look at him was probably a better argument for his drug use than anything I could come up with, which was a lot. 
Even though it was clear the case wasn't in her favor the other lawyer still did a good job of painting him in a pitiful light and garnering sympathy. Say what you want about her, but she was extremely charismatic, and while she probably wasn't going to win she could at least lower his sentence. That was until her client started to open his mouth and talk. Here's a tip, if you're even in the enviable decision of being accused of a crime, when your lawyer is talking, keep your mouth shut. They know what they're doing, and no matter what you think you do not. So this druggie starts to not only talk over his lawyer, but actually contradicts her. For me this was perfect. He was practically putting the cuffs on himself at that point, and it was annoying. This was less great for his own lawyer, who was quickly becoming angrier and angrier. She started to scold him and everything quickly fell apart. They got into a full on yelling match in the middle of the courtroom, right in front of the jury. Now I probably could have just kept my mouth shut, but everything was just too perfect. I started to egg the man on, encouraging him to keep going. The lawyer turned to me, absolutely furious. She started to yell at both of us, red faced and screaming. The judge finally got started to yell and demand she stop before calling a quick recess. The judge asked to meet her in a separate room, where I assume they chewed her out. She came back out looking and acting very meek afterwards, quickly forcing her client to accept a plea deal before leaving the court. I learned later that she resigned almost immediately, probably to avoid being fired. From what I heard she moved out of state and got a job at a different law firm, though I'm not sure if she still does trials. This guy was already on his way out, but I suspect I pushed him over the edge. He was starting to get a reputation around my area as a blubbering idiot, which was a real shame. He was actually pretty smart and wrote many papers on law that got published, but he was not good with people. In theory he understood everything perfectly, but he wasn't great in practice. He stammered a lot and tended to drone on and on, which impressed no one. He also had a very weird fashion sense, which didn't help him either. I found myself facing him when I was still quite inexperienced. I'd been working as a lawyer for about a year at that point, and while I had a few wins under my belt I was still inexperienced. Even when I heard of the opposing console's reputation I still didn't feel much better about my odds, so for my case I went all out. It was a simple land dispute, and the evidence was clearly in his favor, but somehow he kept messing it up. He was wearing an old fashioned straw style suit and his long hair was tied back in a ponytail. His arguments were even worse than his fashion sense. They were boring and flat, he kept stuttering and using the wrong words. The judge was clearly unimpressed, but he kept going. That was until someone let out a slight cough in the silent courtroom. Something in him must have just snapped. Suddenly he went silent, grabbed his folder, and walked out of the courtroom. Everyone was just too shocked to stop him, and by the time one of the officers ran out to find him he was gone. No one knew what happened to him, including me, until about 5 years later that is. I was going back to my old university to talk to some of my old teachers when I ran into him again. Apparently he became a university professor after his dramatic exit to law, a field that he was doing much better in than being a lawyer, 